when the Apostle Paul reflects upon the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, he writes of a baby who would grow to be king, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God who is worthy of honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Tonight, we gather to sing praises to the God who is shown to us in Jesus and to remember his coming as an answer to a great promise and his promise still to dwell with us through the twists and turns of our lives and to one day return in glory and splendor to bring his kingdom with him. Tonight, we remember, worship and honor Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Beloved in Christ, in this Christmas tide, let it be our care and delight to hear again the message of the angels and in heart and mind to go even on to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass and the babe lying in the manger. Let us read and mark in Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first days of our disobedience on to the glorious redemption brought us by this holy child. And let us make this place glad with our carols of praise. But first, let us pray for the needs of his whole world, for peace and goodwill over all the earth, for the mission and unity of the church for which he died, and especially in this country and within this city. And because this of all things would rejoice his heart, let us at this time remember in his name the poor and the helpless, the hungry and the oppressed, the sick and those who mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children, and all those who know not the Lord Jesus, or who love him not, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Lastly, let us remember before God all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light, that multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh, and with whom in this Lord Jesus we are forevermore one. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven in the words which Christ himself taught us to say as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, may I say the warmest of welcomes to you tonight as we gather here in Craiga for our annual service of Lessons and Carols. Um, I'd just like to say if you are a visitor, uh, please do feel at home among us. Uh, if you're someone that would come to us for this service in particular each year, it's good to see you back. And if you're here all the time, it's nice to see you as well. Um, I'd just like to draw your attention to the order of service, uh, which will, after these announcements, will more or less uh, continue unannounced. And you'll find the uh, words of the carols that we will share uh, in uh, the order there.
I would just like to say a big thank you uh, to John and to the choir, to, to Gordon and his ministry to us on the organ this evening, to Robert and to Denison and to Michael who put the order of services together um, and made uh, all the arrangements to put the uh, evening together. Also to all the folk who provided um, and helped to organise the catering that we we'll share, uh, which I hope you can stay for after the service this evening. All of that is really much appreciated, so a big thank you to all the folk involved. You'll see also on your order of service that each year we select a theme for the readers, and that theme can be very varied depending upon uh, what has been going on in the world and in uh, our church family that particular year. Uh, so it's a delight and a privilege this year um, that the PW have been invited to read the lessons at our service this evening as we continue to mark and celebrate the 90th anniversary of that organisation working here in Craiga and on behalf of God's kingdom further afield. So I'd like to thank the ladies from the PW uh, who are going to share the readings with us uh, this evening. Uh, other than that, I would just say, uh, if you haven't picked up one of our uh, news sheets uh, this week, uh, please do so uh, while you're here. And you'll also see on the back of your order of service and in that new sheet some of the information for our upcoming Christmas services which you are all warmly invited to next Lord's Day uh, being Christmas Eve on uh, the evening of that day 11.30pm we have our Christmas Eve service and then Christmas Day at 9am uh, and then of course we find ourselves approaching the conclusion of the year with a special service uniting with the Methodist Church and the Salvation Army uh, down in the Methodists on Sunday the 31st at 4pm so I believe they're all uh, the uh, announcements and notices and as we come now we do so with an attitude of worship and an attitude of praise before holy God singing this beautiful piece which reminds us in the winter and in the darkness there is a light and a warmth his name is Jesus and we sing of him with the words of see amid the winter snow
God announces the result of man's, uh, man and woman's disobedience. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed to you above all livestock and all the wild animals, you will crawl in your, on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. Thanks be to God. promises Abraham that the nations of the earth will be blessed through his descendants. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies, and through your offspring all nations on earth will be blessed, because you have obeyed me. Thanks be to God.
Christ's birth and the kingdom are foretold by Isaiah. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. Thanks be to God. that Christ will bring is foretold. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears. But with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the hole of the cobra, and the young child put his hand into the viper's nest. 
They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Thanks be to God.
the angel Gabriel greets the Virgin Mary. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel. Since I am a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she, who was said to be barren, is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. Thanks be to God.
Lesson six, since Matthew tells of the birth of Jesus. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Thanks be to God.
shepherds go to the manger. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. Thanks be to God. Sing your 
The Magi, the wise men, are led by a star to Jesus. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler he will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child, and as soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. Thanks be to God.
St. John unfolds the great mystery of the Incarnation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God.
Just before I pray and pronounce the words of the benediction, can I just once again invite you to stay behind, if you can do so, uh, in the Allen Hall directly at the conclusion of the service uh, for that time of fellowship. It would be lovely to share that with you over a cup of tea. And I'd also like to echo the thanks that I offered at the start of the service uh, to everyone who has taken part uh, to the choir and to the junior choir who turned out so well tonight and sang so beautifully and to all who read and to all who contributed uh, to what I hope was a blessed time for us to share. It really is one of those services that uh, feels like Christmas has really come when we can gather together to share in our service of lessons and carols. So thank you for coming tonight and I hope and pray that you have been blessed as we have gathered together. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give to your work and to present this offering with thankful hearts. We pray that you would take it and use it in the name of Jesus Christ, whose birth we have focused on this evening. And may the circumstances of his birth, the promises that he fulfilled and the promises that he continues to fulfill be the song in our heart this night. We ask that the blessing of you, God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, would be ours this night, and indeed, forevermore. Mm -hmm.